If you're a regular viewer of energy media videos, you know that we really like geothermal and we think that that's going to be a, at a very popular, you know, way to ge uh, generate uh, electricity uh, in the coming years. I'm going to be talking to Kirsten Marcia, who is the president and CEO of Deep Earth Energy Production. It's located near Estevan, Saskatchewan, and we're going to talk about her project. So welcome to the interview, Kirsten. Well, thank you so much. Um, it's going to be fun to be here and have this conversation. We've we've talked before, but a lot of our viewers won't have uh, listened to the that old uh, our old podcast uh, recording. So why don't we start with the basics and just have you give us an overview of Deep? Absolutely, thank you. Um, so Deep is a geothermal power generation company. Um, as you mentioned, we're located near Estevan, Saskatchewan. Um, we're conventional geothermal in that um, we'll be drilling three and a half kilometers down in order to be able to produce brine that's 120 degrees Celsius. That's hot enough that we can use technology to generate power. Um, we'll also be looking at direct use opportunities such as you know large commercial greenhouses uh, and other uh, anything that needs um, basically free heat, right? <laughs> Um, oh, this sounds like, uh, I mean, no, there, there are other technologies. We've done some work or some interviews with uh, Ever Technologies, the closed loop ge geothermal. Um, how big is that pool of hot water uh, below the Earth's surface? Have you, it does it give you decades of access to hot water? So the pool is vast. Um, it, it actually, in Alberta, it's called the Basal Cambrian Sandstone. In Saskatchewan, it's the same formation, it's called the Deadwood, and it extends all the way to South Dakota to Deadwood, where it actually outcrops. So this is a very, very vast, very well-known um, hot sedimentary aquifer. Um, in our location, um, so, you know, what I'm alluding to is that there's could be the potential for hundreds of thousands of megawatts of, of power. In our location, the initial block of geothermal will be 30 megawatts. And Schlumberger, which is now rebranded under SLB, um, has confirmed that that initial block will produce power for at least 40 years. So, and this is base load power, right? So this is always on 24 seven. Um, this, is, this is very interesting. Um, what, do you have an idea of how much per megawatt hour you'll be able, uh, it'll cost you to generate power? So, yeah, sorry, we haven't disclosed that. You know, we are, um, when you compare the installed cost of geothermal, we are more expensive than wind and solar, but we produce power three to four times as much. So there's that kind of that, that offset. Yes, it's expensive to drill these wells. Um, in our situation, we have the brine that we're producing is just absolutely terrible stuff. Uh, very, very corrosive. And so we have to use a protective tu tubing string um, within our wells, which doesn't come cheap. So that's that's just the reality. But it, it definitely competes, you know, when you when you or and can out compete to traditional renewables. Now, um, when you get the hot water to surface, you've got to turn the heat into electricity, and you use an orc. Uh, yeah. Could you explain what that is? Yes, organic Rankine cycle technology. So how it works is we're going to be producing the brine um, up from the, the, the aquifer. Um, it's going to enter the facility at 120 degrees Celsius, and it goes through a heat exchanger first. We mine the heat at that point, and that's the last we do with the brine. The brine then actually goes back into the ground to reload with heat. But once we have that heat in the heat exchanger, we introduce it to a working fluid, in our case, butane which has a lower boiling point than, than water. And so then that butane goes from the liquid phase to the vapor phase, and that's what drives a turbine and makes power. And then you cool that butane in cooling towers um, back to the liquid phase. So it's called binary cycle. In fact, it's, you know, you think of it as you've got one loop of, of this brine that's going in and out of the earth, and then you've got another loop of the uh, butane going in and out of the vapor and liquid phase. Uh, very interesting. Now, you're going to do this in phases, right? Five megawatts to th uh, 30 megawatts to 100 megawatt, 180 megawatts of generating capacity. Have I got that right? We're actually skipping right to the 30 megawatt facility. Um, 
Oh, okay. So how how far along are you? Give us a, a timeline if you don't mind. So we're in construction financing right now. Um, and we we've actually are working on a, a proposal for a, a combined geothermal um, with natural gas facility, um, all base load power um, to get to that commercial scalability. Um, the, the truth is the natural gas lowers our overall cost of the project and it pulls geothermal to the finish line faster than if we wait until the, just the pure geothermal um, is cost competitive. Is the the Saskatchewan government or the federal government coming to the table with any kind of policy support, financial support for the project? That's a great question because, as you're aware, we've received um, you know, some wonderful support, but funding support through uh, Natural Resources Canada, and by introducing the natural gas, you know, we we wanted to make sure that this was still going to be on side and. And I don't want to put words in mouths, but it, essentially the feedback is the importance of geothermal is, is, is so great that we need to do whatever we can to make it work. Because over time, it will be competitive on its own. And this is, this is the definition of energy transition. If we could make geothermal work just like today on a pure place and, and SAS mm -hmm. Power was willing to pay um, very top dollar for the power, great, we would do that. But quitting is not an option. Um, so if we have to bring in some natural gas to get it to work, it works. And, and that was certainly the feedback that we've received from, from Natural Resources Canada. Um, they were very supportive. Um, and our, and our provinces as well. As, as you know, um, we, Saskatchewan would love to be an energy superpower. That, that we would love that. So it's very much an all on the table approach. Um, in Saskatchewan right now, even coal generation is being extended. So yes, we're looking at every option and if we can produce um, very low emitting geothermal power um, and you know as a, as a, and have a commercial scale to that, um, of course there's going to be support and interest. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because this seems like a, a typically Canadian problem. We we <laughs> develop a technology, we get it to the point where it's maybe at a pilot project or something close to that, and and then we don't have the kind of private access to private capital the Americans have, nor do we support it with policy and financing the way the Americans do. And companies get caught in limbo; they can't get caught in that valley of death, you know, between. <laughs> between the pilot project or demo project and commercialization. And it really is the scaling up, isn't it? It is, right? So the, the bigger we go on geothermal, um, you know, the more attractive it is. Uh, you know, there's cost savings on drilling the wells over time, um, the organic rain kind, the ORC facility, um, much cheaper on a per megawatt basis to go large scale than a, you know, small five megawatt. So you know, there we are. Um, we're excited about it. Um, we, and uh, yeah, I, I'm, to have now have Canada's first, you know, very large scale commercial facility is pretty exciting. So from a timing perspective, we have some engineering to, to work through. Um, you, uh, we have to, uh, renegotiate our contract with SAS power because this is a much larger facility. So we're hoping to have those two components done within the next six months. Um, and then we believe that given the feedback we've received over the last few months, that there is investor interest um, to on the equity side. And of course, the, the large Canadian banks are interested on the debt. So because, again, now it's this, this large, very hard to finance a demo. Right. Yeah. So but now that we're commercial and there's attractive returns in the project, go figure. You know, now there's interest. <laughs> Well, again, uh, I, my my take on this is that we could do a lot better job in Canada of supporting uh, companies like yours that are at the forefront of a, a new technology. And, you know, here's hoping something changes because it's been like this for a long time. Now, there is something new since I talked to you last, uh, at least I think it's new, uh, and that is the inclusion of uh, Indigenous participation in the project and the possibility of using the heat to, to warm greenhouses. That's right. So we've partnered um, with the First Nations uh, Natural Resources Centre of Excellence here in Saskatoon, um, led by a wonderful CEO, Sheldon Watney. <clears throat> and we're, this partnership, so... The, the, the center is supported by all 74 First Nations in Saskatchewan. So it really aligns us with, a, you know, access to, to all communities. 
And, you know, because there are some really great programs with loan guarantees um, and investment opportunities, you know, we're hoping that we'll be able to, through this, this conduit, be able to attract not just the, the equity participation um, as, as, part, as part of our, our duty to, to include, um, but also to be able to, you know, start those early conversations on what, you know, job creation um, and training would, would look like for at a facility like this. Yeah, that, that's very interesting. Um, I, you know, as an old Saskatchewan boy, the thought of commercial greenhouses in southern Saskatchewan seems odd, but now it makes sense. So let's hope well, that that works. Well, it's, it's, it's a really, in, it's, it's a surprise to us too. So um, we, we always looked at greenhouses, but, you know, just we're wondering how that would all actually play out. And we've, we recently partnered with, um, company out of BC, uh, the name is Oppie. They've got a really interesting story. Oppie stands is short for Oppenheimer. Um, they actually had the first business license in the history of British Columbia. So they were they were the one, it was two brothers that were um, actually supplying, had a business supplying equipment to the Yukon Gold Rush. Anyways, of course the business has evolved and now they're a major um, North American produce distribution company and retailer. So that's the gap for us is that it's, there's so much to the greenhouse industry. You can't just build a greenhouse and hope someone's going to buy your, your product. So through our partnership with Opi, and they can have, you know, work on like pre-sale, right? So you're going to know what you're going to be planning to, in our case, likely strawberries, but they would work on making sure that that strawberry already has a home to go to after it's, it's grown. So into Costco, Sam's Club in the States, um, you know, Walmart and and interesting. So they they toured our location because we wanted to look for holes in the idea. Like what 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 would make this not work? You know, access to water and all these things. And it turns out that that location in central Canada um, is just wonderful for feeding into the United States. So it, they're not just looking at this for uh, for Canadian uh, distribution. It it works so well to go right into um, into the Midwest. I so, can't yeah, wait. We, we I can't wait. I can't <laughs> wait until I walk into a supermarket and see a, you know, the strawberries with a sign made in, in Esteban. That well, okay, so of course, well, and it's, it's funny you say that too, because so we were thinking, you know, the marketing attraction would be, you know, using, it's grown using geothermal power and heat. Um, but it's interesting that the brand, that wheat sheaf brand also carries weight, that that's a very recognizable, wholesome, um, you know, marketing component. Good stuff. Well, look, uh, I hope that things continue to go well for you, uh, Kirsten. We'll check in with you next year and see how things are going. Thanks so much, Markham. I appreciate the opportunity to share a story.